Inte vi våra tar i dig. Adjutorio nostri, mi nomine dom. Confitio de onnipotenti, piate Maria, si vivius si in ibiato, mi chiedia, cangelo, piate e vani bautisti. Santi so posti, rispetto e polo omnibus, santi se vobis fratres. Qui a peccavini, viscocitazione, vero e opere, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Irio preco, beata Maria, si vivius in ibiato, mi chiedia, ma cangelo, piate e vani bautista. Sanctus Apostolos, pite me polum omne, sanctus e vos fratres, orare pro mere dominum Deum nostrum. Amen. Misteriato vesti omnipotens Deus, et imis spicatis vestis per ducar vostra vita eterna. Indulgenziam absolutione mele missione peccatolo nostro, contivo nobis omnipotens et misericos dominus. Deus ti conversus vivificabis nos. Ostende nobis domine misericordia metuam. Domine exauriratione meam, Dominus Bobiscum, Orremus, De Christum Domine nostri, Amen, Orramus te Domine per merit del Santorum tuo locurre melico, Ipsum, Omnum, Samuel, Luigi, Divis, Domine Picciotto, Amen. Cocito, cocitazione, spazio, sono una festa. Invocabili, smedego, exalium. 
reducăm captivitatea în vestă de cultul specii. Chirie Eleisa, Chirie Eleisa, Christe Eleisa, Chirie Eleisa, Chirie Eleisa. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Grazie a Sagi Vosti vi porto a mano in mano. Domine Deus Rex Celestis Deus Pater Omnipotens. Domine Fili Unigenite Iesu Christi. Domine Deus Agnus Dei Filius Patris. Vittoris Peccata Mundi Misericordia. Vittoris Peccata Mundi Sissi per deprecazione nostra. Misericordia a Dextra Patris Misericordia. Colin tu solus angus tu solus dominus tu solus altissimus Iesu Christi, con Santo Spiritu in gloria de Hippatis. Amen. Constitutos pro umana shos fregit dilitati non posse subsistere. Da nove sattem mendes e corporins, ut ea que pro pecades nos e patimut e adjuvante vincamus. Per dominum nostrum e Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui te convivire regna in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, Per omnia secola secolo ovum. Lectio epistrebiati pali apostoli a Romanos. Fratres nemine quicquem debiatis nisir in vicendi legatis. Qui an indirige proximum legem in plevis. 
na no no do te la vez no o che des no for our face no thousand testimony on the no con your face says qual es al mandato in of verbo instaurato dirige proximo to on secote ipsum The lecture proximal on non operatur. Plenitudo ergo legis est de lexion. Liberasti nos domine ex afflidenti vos. Deus qui nos odeo in confidisti. In Deo la dame o tutto il dia de nomine tu confidemi in secos. Alleluia. Profundiscam aviati domini, domini, exaliazione mea, alleluia.
There are three Sundays this year between the 23rd and last Sundays after Pentecost. They're called the Intercalary Sundays. The prayers and the readings are taken from the last three Sundays after Pentecost to fill in between the 23rd and last Sundays. And so the readings today and the prayers are from the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. The Gregorian prophets are from the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. There are copies of the prophets at the back of the church. The epistle is taken from the letter of the Apostle St. Paul 
to the Romans. Brethren, owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth his neighbor hath fulfilled the law. For thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is comprised in this word, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The love of our neighbor worketh no evil. Love, therefore, is the fulfilling of the law. The Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, when Jesus entered into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, a great tempest arose in the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awaked him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And Jesus said to them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then rising up, he commanded the winds and the sea, and there came a great calm. But the men wondered, saying, What manner of man is this? For the winds and the sea obey him. Just a couple of announcements. First of all, I will be available after this Mass for testing for confirmations, but I can only test those who have completed the cards, the registration cards for confirmation. They will be available next Saturday morning, 9.30, for those who missed testing today. So the confirmations are next Sunday. As a consequence, there will be No catechism classes next Sunday. Instead, there'll be a practice for the confirmants and sponsors, both, which will take place at 9 o'clock. So make sure you're all present for that practice in which we'll explain to you how the ceremony will take place. You need to bring with you the confirmation booklet, which has not only the knowledge you must know, but also the prayers of the ceremony of confirmation, all containing the book, that bring it with you so we can, you can follow the ceremony and we can explain it during that practice before the Mass. I remind all the confirmants and all of their sponsors the confirmation is the sacrament of the living and that all confirmants and all sponsors must be in the state of grace So if you have not had the chance yet to get to confession, do so during the week or at the very latest on Sunday morning next. Make sure you are all in the state of grace so as to receive the sacrament or sponsor the sacrament worthily. Next Sunday, we will be having after the ceremony of confirmation. Confirmation will precede the Mass. The Mass will follow. Then we're going to have a luncheon, a reception in honor of Bishop Tissier de Malloray. It will take place at the St. Joseph House. We hope that you all come for that occasion. It's also a great parish activity. We only have a bishop visiting once every two years, and so we need to make him welcome. He will also be giving a conference after the lunch, which I'm sure will be, always, will be very interesting, as it always is. Mass next Sunday will be a pontifical high mass. So we're going to give those ceremonies and the visit of the bishop all the honor which is his due. Reminder for the members of the confraternity of the poor souls that we're going to have the annual meeting after the high mass on the 18th of November. And that's a good occasion for us to remember our obligations as members of the confraternity and take care of the administrative details. That will be then in two weeks' time on the 18th of November. The ceremonies during this week are indicated in the bulletin, the times, 
find a note in the bulletin about the sleepovers for the girls at the end of November and December likewise. Finally, I have the November issue of the Eucharistic Crusade newsletter, which I would love to hand out in return for an October treasure sheet from the children. So if any of you have not yet given me your treasure sheets, then we can do an exchange. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. O God, who has established that we who are in so great dangers cannot persevere on account of our human weakness without his help. That's how the prayer of this verse began. And the dangers that are referred to are those contained in the gospel. You will all recognize that bark in which Adelaide and Saviour was sleeping has a double symbolism. The ship of our soul and the church herself in both Christ's presence, the commander of the seas and the wind and of all things, and yet, often, he seems to be sleeping. And it brings us to the puzzling mystery of the sufferings, the evils, the sickness, the poverty, the failures that beset us in our earthly life. We've all heard the objection to our faith in Almighty God. If he were truly so good and loving, then surely he would stop such illnesses and suffering and misunderstandings and dishonesty and losses and business failures and all the other evils that come upon us on a daily basis. Even King David in the Psalms complains, how is it that the wicked prosper so much and they seem to be blessed in every side, whereas those who try and keep God's will, the pious ones, suffer suffering, death, and all the evils of this earthly life. How is that? Why is it God doesn't take care of us and give us all the good things that we want? in our earthly existence. The temptation to think in that manner is one which needs to be clearly answered so that we can understand not the divine mind, which of course goes beyond our understanding, but a little of the beauty of God's plan and why it is such, in as much as we can understand it, why it is that we are destined to suffer sicknesses and poverty and go without and failings and difficulties and misunderstandings and hurt feelings and persecutions during our earthly life. Why is it that this falls into God's plan for us? And then we can understand a little bit better how we can Prophet, take advantage, use those events that God puts in our path for a reason. First reason. We can understand a little of why it is we have to suffer so much. And it is a test of our sincerity. You know, if God promised earthly success, money, profession, comfort, good health, a nice life to those who loved him and served him, then certainly people would love and serve him for earthly advantage, us included. In fact, when everything is going well for us, 
and we're very happy and life is easy, we say, God, I love you. I want to do your will. I offer myself into thy hands. But do we mean it? It's easy to say. We only know if we mean it or not, when trial and tribulation comes upon us, suffering and difficulties, and then if we're still determined to keep God's commandments, still determined to love God above all things, still determined to offer ourselves to do His holy will in the midst of adversity and suffering, then we know that our heart is sincere and right with God. Otherwise, we would never know our own self. That's the first reason why it is that we can understand that it's in God's plan. There's another. Which is mentioned also in the college of this Mass. Which states that we are justly afflicted for our sins. That is to say that we deserve not just because of original sin, which is the source of evil and suffering on this earth without a doubt, but we deserve the difficulties that come upon us because of our own actual sins. Our rejection of grace, our own selfishness and self-will and rebellion and ugliness and lack of charity towards others. So that when things come upon us and suffering comes upon us, we can't pretend, oh, I am so innocent. Why is this happening to me? No, I deserve it. I deserve every bit of it and more. This is very clearly indicated in sacred scripture. If we read St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, he says, The God is a father to his sons. And what father is it that does not chastise and discipline his own son? Likewise, God chastises us for our faults, as a true father must do, correcting us. For God chast loves us. He chastises those whom he loves. In fact, if you see some, be if you see some, be some boys fighting in a field. And the man walks over and grabs one of them by the scruff of the neck and starts to correct him for fighting. You know that that man was the father of that boy. And the other man will walk by and says, it's not my business. The father corrects his children. And so is God. So does he do to us. That we might accept that correction well For our faults. Another reason too why it is that we have such suffering and difficulties on our earthly life. And it is that Almighty God wants to teach us a lesson of detachment. Because everything went nice for us on this earth. Perfect health, money, success, friends, earthly happiness, everything is nice for me, no problems, no misunderstandings, no family difficulties, I would become intensely, disorderly attached to this earthly life. And I would lose the sense of eternity. I wouldn't be able to understand those words of my divine Savior. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his justice and all the things will be given to you besides. No, I would seek earthly success. But I know. I know full well that I'm going to suffer loss, friends and family, betrayals, physically, sickness, poverty, going without, business failures. I know it's going to happen. It's part of life. And that teaches me not to be attached to this earthly existence. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Philippians, our 
conversation, our dwelling place is in heaven from which God will reform the body of our loneliness, make it like to the body of his glory. Or as St. Luke reports in the Acts of the Apostles, if we didn't have hope in a resurrection at the end of the world and have faith in the resurrection of Christ, we'd be the most miserable of men with our only hope being on this earth. And so the sufferings and pains and difficulties of our earthly life are a lesson to teach us to long for heaven and to earn our heaven by our actions on this earth. Another reason too. Why it is that there must be in God's plan sufferings and pains and difficulties and misunderstandings, we don't will them we can't will them in themselves. We try to escape them as much as we can. But God wants them as a part of his plan. He directs such evils to a greater good. And what is that greater good? It is that we might vanquish. As we prayed in the collect of this Mass, we might vanquish such evils. We might win the victory, the reward, which is promised to those who overcome which if we had nothing to fight for and nothing to fight against, there'd be no victory. We know that passage of the book of the Apocalypse well, where our Lord says to St. John, and he passes on to us the words to the church of Laodicea, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He opens and lets me in, will sup with me and I with him. But what we don't understand so much is what precedes that and what follows that text, which explains how it is that Christ our Lord works in our souls. And before he says, you must be like gold tried in the fire the fire of tribulation. Not like straw that's burned up, but gold that's purified. It's solid, it's valuable. It's and it's purified in the fire of tribulation. And he goes on to say, Behold, those whom I love I chastise, that they might receive the reward. And he who vanquishes he who overcomes will sit with me on the throne, just as I, who have overcome, sit with my Father on the throne in heaven. There's a victory which requires that we overcome. And this is the treasure of a spiritual life. And why it is that there are, in God's plan, such difficulties to try us, try our faith, try our hope, try our love of God. The same applies also for the church. It's just like not one of us is free from sufferings and pains and tribulations and difficulties in his daily life. Like with the church. You think that Christ could have made a church which would be perfect in every way. Well, it is perfect, but... It's full of imperfections and sufferings. Persecutions and attacks from within and without have been the lot of the church from the very beginning. It's never been without them. Why? Wouldn't it be nice if the church was just so perfect and tranquil that there'd be no troubles and no discussions about doctrine and no rebellions and no heresies, no schisms, no fights amongst Catholics and everything was just perfect and lovey-dovey and wonderful on this earth. It's not the reality of the church at all. But wouldn't it be nice? You might think. In fact, it is 
that the sufferings and pains that the church bears are just as much a part of the imitation of Christ as other sufferings and tribulations that we, each one of us, must bear. And just as each one of us is refined in the fire by tribulation and our love is proven, so likewise it is for the church. Every time the church gets too comfortable, too wealthy, too easy to live without opposition, then comes the attack, then comes the persecution, then comes corruption from within. And the corruption from within brings about attacks from without. The whole pedophilia scandal is but one of many instances in that which punctuate constantly the history of the church, which has constantly required a reform. When the saints came, they instituted their religious orders, they brought about the reform that the church is always in need of. That's what the Council of Trent did. Every council in the history of the church, except Vatican II, brought about a spiritual renewal, a reform of the life of Catholics, just as it defined doctrine. Papias Pius XII on the occasion of the false condemnation of Cardinal Mincenti by the communist government in Hungary, pointed out that persecution is inseparable from the life of the church, and that from the very beginning the persecutions have attacked Catholics as being enemies of the state, enemies of the country, enemies of the government, and it's a lie. He refers back to the first persecution under Nero, in which the Catholics in Rome were accused of burning the city down and being enemies of the city and destroying the common good. And so what they did is they attached them to poles, covered them with pitch, and set fire to them, making a mockery of the words of Christ, you'll be the light of the earth. And the same is the attacks of the communists, whether it be in China even to this present day. Same is the attacks of all the enemies of the church, enemies of the common good of the state. Of course, it's a lie. And the Pope pointed out that they can attack the buildings and the properties of the church, destroy them if they wish. They can kill individuals if they wish. But the church will always continue until the end of time. The faith continues and such persecutions actually bring forth great fruit he said that to the bishops of Poland in 1953. Of course, the communists were not able to destroy the church in Poland. Much to the contrary, the church overcame communism. And so it is that the reality of the church is like the reality of each one of us. That the sufferings and the persecutions that prevent the church from becoming comfortable on this earth are essential. Just as they are essential for us. And there's the great era of the modern day liberation theology, which has as its objective to promote peace and justice on this earth. Not everlasting salvation, but earthly comfort the good of the environment, peace amongst men, not the salvation of souls, not the commandments of God. This is the ultimate attack to the church from within, destroying its supernatural mission, emptying the church of the reality of its divine life of grace. An attack from without, coming within, but such an attack purifies the life of the church greatly because in reacting against it, we seek one thing, one thing only, life everlasting. You can look in the life of any of the great saints of the church and see how they suffered persecution. St. Alphonsus de Liguori was expelled from the order of the Redemptorists that he founded. St. John of the Cross was put in prison by his own brothers of the order that he reformed, the Carmelites, disgelsed, and so on.
And we need to understand that each one of us, in their own way, must be purified and sanctified if we're going to imitate Christ. And if we want to find the real uh, ultimate reason why it is that there are sufferings and misunderstandings and difficulties and hardships and pains and losses and failures on this earth. Let's look at our divine Savior, of whom Isaiah prophesied eight centuries before that he is the man of sorrows, abject, the most despised of men. Why? Because the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was bruised for our sins, wounded for our faults. And there he is on the cross. He came king of all. And he came in sorrow and suffering to bear the sins of the whole world. And he is the one who is the model for us to follow. Is it any wonder that St. John records the words of our divine Savior in his discourse after the Last Supper. He promised the Holy Ghost to come and dwell in us and teach us all truth. And what is the Holy Ghost going to do? Give us immense joy on this earth? No. You will be sad and you will lament. Amen, I say to you, you'll be sad and you will lament, but the world will rejoice. Our divine Savior said, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. So the sorrow and the sadness and the bitterness of our earthly existence is converted into joy by the love of God, by keeping his commandments, by the grace of the cross. And that's why the divine Saviour asks every one of us, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And we find there the ultimate reason for all of the sufferings and pains and difficulties of our earthly life. It's the cross, which enables us to be united to our divine Savior and truly live on this earth for the love of God. So let's ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of Sorrows, Our Lady of Compassion, that she might enable us to understand that great mystery a little bit more profoundly on a daily basis, on our daily lives, the mystery of the cross, that we might be able to stand faithful at the foot of the cross with her and understand a little more profoundly the wonderful beauty of the plan of divine providence which directs all things to the greater love of God, to the salvation of our souls and does not leave us bereft of all the helps and needs that we must pray to obtain and receive from Almighty God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Orate fratres, omnipotente.
no ni no ni un singularidad de persona, se ni no ni un singularidad de sustancia. Cuando ni de tu gloria revelante te creemos, hay de ver yo tu, hay de espíritu santo, sin diferencia de discreción ni sentimos. O ten confesión y feliz en vida en el que te estás, en el pensar en las propiedades, en el esencia unidad, en el maestad de adorar y cualidad. Cuando la 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 angelia que haga angeli, che lo vengo a qui a Xerabim, qui non c'è sangra ma recordi di una voce di gente. Santo, 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 santo,
nobis quoque peccatoribus. Onea secola secolo Avemos precedes paludare vos maniti Et divinis ilusione formate Ademos nicele Pater Noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, avenia regnum tuum, fia voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Pane nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et imite nobis de vita nostra, sicure nos imitimus de vitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Secula, seculorum. Pax Domini, si sempre vobiscum. Agnus Dei, qui tonis peccato mundi, mi se ne rinu. Agnus Dei, qui tonis peccato mundi, mi se ne rinu. Agnus Dei, qui tonis peccato mundi, dono nobis pac.
Domine non sum dignus. Domine non sum dignus. Domine non sum dignus. Misteriat of Esti omnipotens Deus, et imis suspicatis vestis producar vostar vita meternam. Indulgentiam absolut sine mele missione peccatorum vestum tibua pobis omnipotens et misericos dominus. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tolli de peccata mundi, Domine non sum digno surinta e su tecto meio, se tanto dic verbo es in abito anima mea. Domine non sum digno surinta e su tecto meio, se tanto dic verbo es in abito anima mea. Domine non sum digno surinta e su tecto meio, Se tanto dic verbo es in abito anima mea. Opus Domino nostri Gesù Cristo, custodia et anima tua, mi vita, mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domino nostri Gesù Cristo, custodia et anima tua, mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domino nostri Gesù Cristo, custodia et anima tua, mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domino nostri Gesù Cristo, custodia et anima tua, mi vita, mi vita. Opus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia et anima tua, in vita, in vita, in vita, in vita. Opus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia et anima tua, in vita, in vita, in vita, in vita. Opus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia et anima tua, in vita, in vita. Opus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia et anima tua, in vita, in vita, in vita. Opus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia et anima tua, in vita, in vita, in vita. Opus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia et anima tua, in vita, in vita. 
Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et animam Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et animam Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et Corpus Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vitam et 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 animam Custodiat animam tuami vita vita namami, corpus domini nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vita vita namami, corpus domini nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vita vita namami. Corpus domini nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vita vita namami, corpus domini nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat animam tuami vita vita namami, corpus domini nostri Jesu Christi, Christi custodit animam tuam in vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit animam tuam in vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit animam tuam in vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit animam tuam in vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit animam tuam in vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit animam tuam in vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit animam tuam in vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit animam tuam in vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit animam tuam in vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit tuam in tua vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit tuam in tua vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit tuam in tua vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit tuam in tua vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit tuam in tua vita vita amen. Corpus Domini nostri Iesu Christi custodit tuam in tua vita vita amen. Corpus Domini Jesus Christ, custodit animam in tua vita, vita ad amen. Corpus Domini nostri, Jesus Christ, custodit animam in tua vita, vita ad amen. Corpus Domini nostri, Jesus Christ, custodit animam in tua vita, vita ad
Name indicano proprio Squid Pito Lanzi, Petitis, Credite, Quindi Accipiti del Pietro. Domino suave
Pat.